So the inspiration for this painting came to me um, through Forward the Light Brigade, a poem by Alfred Lord Tennyson, um, which is, you know, some literature that my dad read um, back in the day. And it came to me recently upon designing my newest, latest book, which is a different story than what I would like to do in the future um, with my next book. Um, that book was titled The Captain's Log, uh, which you can find online and in my local bookshop here, and I'm working on other places. But, oh, how can I say this? So, so, so there was a flood of inspiration and um, what, what I knew in the very beginning, the nugget of truth, was the light. So, for the Light Brigade seemed like a fitting title. You know, if, 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 if I can share with you briefly, uh, so, so the, as the colors rotate or spin, you know, in the painting, um, yellows to oranges to reds, you know, blues, greens, etc. Uh, light is refracted off of the colors. So I thought, what a pleasant title to myself. Uh, that was the basic inspiration. Yeah, the poem Attack of the Light Brigade by Alfred Lord Tennyson revolves around this battle in Europe, um, the Cossacks versus the Brits and the British. Um, 600 went in of, of Britain's soldiers, troops, and um, what little I know about it, I haven't done heavy research on the poem, but some. And 300 came out alive, so there were losses. And in that regard, I would like to show light. It is my choice to err on an optimistic level of thinking for my painting and feeling, I do hope, but that comes out of the process. In that regard, you all, <clears throat> um, every human is, is uh, forced to live and finally submit to the life thereafter, and I do believe in that. And in regards to that statement, the middle, the center of this painting is both life and death at one. First, I will explain the perimeters of the painting and how its dimension, um, structure, and values of color relate to life's journey. The brightest colors on the outside of the octagon which aren't there yet, you can't see them yet because I haven't painted them yet, but I'm getting there. Um, will, should, I should say, because, you know, who knows what tomorrow brings, but the life of the painting should, it should exert life, energy, joy, light, but also, you know, it's, it's interesting. Um, the, the, the center of death. Um, the first chapter of the book that is highly related to my painting, um, kind of segueing in and out of one another, is birth. So, um, the first two poems I will read, I would like to read um, to you all. Uh, back to back, um, as with the rest of the poems that I will read today uh, to you. Um, speak to the painting's brighter, brighter colors, yellows to yellow oranges to oranges. Um, so we're up in here somewhere, you guys. Um, if I may, I'll stand to point at the painting for a minute. So, beginning with the brightest yellow to the yellow oranges to the oranges, uh, you may experience those sort of colors, those colors throughout the poetry. Um, 
Angst stems from these colors, but uh, also joy and innocence. A child of our time. I am a child of our time. I own not a single dime. I am innocent. I have no money. It's been spent. Mostly on candy and soda, or its equivalent. I owe not a single cent. I, I never know where, why, or when. I dance now and again. I am sincere. I have 20 questions about everything I hear. Adults amaze me. My parents emblaze me. Yet I love them with all of my heart. And I never know when to start. I procrastinate. They still set me straight. I'm always late. Call it by choice or call it by fate. I can never tell you the time or the date. I could care less if you have to wait. My world exists on a plate. I try to eat everything from toys to cornflakes. And I've made a thousand mistakes. Go ahead, put me in the corner. I could use a break. Thank you all. And the next poem is titled, is called, Peace on the Shores of Life, everyone. Trust, the gift, the precious gift, the highest attribute in this world. Unearned, it goes its separate way. Earned, it finds attraction. Conquerable to none, it conquers. In silence and in beauty, in painlessness and painfulness, in all areas felt and unfelt, light, levity, and even in the rain, trust is earned. Honesty, painful, but heed it when heard. Their trust you will earn then, but if need be, don't trust them for their trust needn't be earned at times. You may go to your grave trustworthy and overlooked. It happens, it's happening, but I wouldn't worry too much about this at this time, if it is true. Only you know deep inside. We've all heard the allegory. Would you jump on the grenade for them? And well, would you? Self. So, Self-sacrifice is not needed. Self-abasement is not needed. The natural man, the conqueror, not needed. Be yourselves, be who you are. Be one, completely who you are, and you will see. The designs of others are not necessary for your design to fulfill itself. And what I mean by this is, you've heard about looking at another's page. Well, in moments of desperation it happens, but be well in it. And upon it resonating with you, their words, their ways, then do so passively. The inspired path, the only path. The trust of gods will visit you then and guide us in moments of solitude. So, jump on the grenade if you must, but I wouldn't. Don't let it go that far. Don't let the torture of days get to yourself and it won't happen or ever go that far. Listen to the wind. It might say nothing at times, so be well in it. Peace on the shores of life. Peace on the shores of life. I think it ended in a red line or two of innocence. Uh, rather, confidence, <laughs> peace on the shores of life, everybody. So yellows to oranges mostly. An angel bestows mercy is the next piece. Um, this is an essay type format, uh, bright glowing white, everyone. An angel bestows mercy. It is in the infinity of light that I have found space, not in darkness. Darkness persists, yet in it a falling off of the light. 
Therefore, your vision becomes clouded by it, by depression. And though my abstractions of thought are dark, I cannot proceed any longer in its direction. One must attain to the light. One must attract visitors to his dominion, to his palace, rather. So, in doing so, I reflect on the greatest mo monuments of art, the glory of statues placed in parks, the single ray of light, as Emerson said long ago, to befall upon those statues is an equivalence of their mercy, of their perfection. And I think of Rothko and shame, and of Clifford Still, the same. Yet, Martin, Agnes, in all her grayish posing, found the light not a single moment too soon. For she breathed into it, into her work, light. And I spent hours, days, months going to museums in New York, only to be garnished in thought, wagered by it. To set foot into the Metropolitan Museum with all the luminaries of painting, the Hudson River lit up by sunrise, the Japanese by light, leaving space to breathe in the papers, the scrolls of, la of the landscapes of Chinese men. So I work to bring the light in on the brink of shadows. I will show you how. In the darkness is always a moment of serenity that will lead you to it, the light. So go where your hearts reside in the dark. And it is true that too much is too much at times. So be good in it. The dark. Let it console you, to rest your eyes, to convey messages in the dark of meaning. Let that very darkness soothe the lids to your soul. Be well in them, those eyes that see so well, and soon you may venture for miles into paintings of light, without a thought given to distraction, to contemplation, to all those opposing forces in this world that do nothing but to throw up obstacles in our way on our way to the light of the heavens shone down on us through him, God. Thank you all. So moving forward, this poem about life realities speaks to the heart, everybody. A sadder and lighter piece which includes blues and indigos poems, etc. Bushwick, Brooklyn, 2006, of mine. That book, you know, is a, is, a, is a book of mine. Down on Moore Street, the doves would come and go, and the pigeons all had afros, and the sparrows sang songs to them, and the freaking Ricans drove mini bikes to the sound of five or ten of us from above. And love was hard to come by between the avenues, all dredged up like sewer, sewer rats in cups, drinks on Siegel Street, and neat, neat little get boys and girls came and went to the sounds of armies and of artistry then. And we did all we could not to harden them, but fears ran as deep as subway rats on cocaine, sniffed out, bummed out, leaning on tables down the streets, trying to find something good to eat, women looking like intellectual freak shows all dolled up in their Sunday's best, came and went then during the nights, except it wasn't their best because old school kicks met dicks then. But towards me, they were so pleasant then because I gave them, each of them, the time spent in lofts and bars enlightening them with my spirit from the West. My homegrown best was my big city's test and damn if that city wasn't hard on me in most ways. Attitudes of dudes and jackets. Classic Reeboks with the pumps. Knickers all rolled up. Sockless with our cups and hands. Sleeves gleaming from beneath two tight jackets. Holy jeans cuffed at the bottoms. Double hooded figures with collars popped in cotton. Soften. Roll on then. To the sounds of young women in streets rolling down windows and ears in cars, 
and exploding dynamite from afar on 4th of July's just below the rivers in the east. A kiss from a lady, bittersweet. A tease, a greeting, a limp, list, a limp wrist nearly bleeding from too many nights on gin and sinning young women holding hands of hands of women's hands. And you say, what's it about? And I say, too many people are trying to feel what they don't have from afar instead of being close to it all in person. Chains of men and babes of babes all in a craze over them. A ghost, a feeling in the night of blight and gin, having slept with ten or more of their kind. And you say, who am I? Just a guy needing a hug to greet this gift of poetry and bittersweet mug with a smile. But I'm out of time here, and it's your move all the while. From the book, um, my book, um, The Wobbly Wheel, this is a multicolored poem for the ages. Um, it's titled The New York Sound, y'all. I'll just read it. Uptight and smug, dodging twerps and thugs, subways screeching, teeth clenching, headphones on the streets, disconnected beats, not enough money to heed the notions in my head, better off dead, but not on rooftops made of glass, with a fine, fine ass to boot, with some fine, fine grass to root and smoke, with some blokes in arm's reach, necks to grab and snag, heads to roll in the neighborhood's strolling of young girls and boys with no toys, just art, to get them there. But, oh my God, that sound, make a grown man's head swivel round, to the look of young women, dilettantes, blondes and brunettes, bleached in fishnets, black-headed youngsters, gunslingers to the sounds of trains in the distances. Instances of men gone awry, foolish men and women gone awry, too much pain to cry, the wells all dried up, but there's still a fifth in my cup, a gulp and a what's up. To the sound of what's up, gentlemen and women, to the sound of heavens and hells, to the sounds of bells on churches in downtowns, Wall Street crutches made to bolster the duchesses of men, the Hudson at night, river paintings in the mat, the psilocybin and street crat, MDMA on the upper deck, fireworks and Frank Stella, black in the nighttime, Friday nights and dining, dreaming and finding to the sounds of it all. And we had a ball. I would like to say it, and to you all, we now have a poem, a black poem, with baritone notes of brown uh, for the reflections of life on life chapter of the book. And uh, so we're going to be in here somewhere in the central most part of the painting. Um, ladders up, you all. Ladders up. Ladder after ladder we climbed into that dangerous city air. That cocaine-filled beauty of a night sought to kill us but couldn't. Invisible as winged unicorns to evil humans, we looked out over that ledge, each and every one of us wondering what it would be like to fly. Yet, our holdfast to ego and immortality and the distractions of drugs, talking, talking, talking. So much talking bound us to the roof. There was a radio in the distance playing some really hip tunes, and some of us danced. I was a dancer in New York, never before and never since. The twinkling and majesty of the city lights below gave one the reign of a falcon and wisdom of the owl, but we were alone in that city. And that's the thing about cities no one tells you when you're young. You're more alone there than when off in the woods playing in isolation. Nature's inevitably nostalgic for a Midwest boy, but you can't be any more alone than when you're surrounded by the multitudes in the big city. I cherished it for a time when I was young and handsome and the envy of so many broken-hearted, onyx-haired vixens. Look at this conservative Midwest boy, they thought fresh from under someone's thumb, I was different. And I played to it, and the New York gals, they loved it. But that night after the bar on the roof, what I found out was something else, that we were all equally lost, 
and damaged, city girl and country boy alike. Or maybe it was the drugs with their fast hold on us. I don't know. What I can say is that without them, I wouldn't have climbed so many ladders up, nor fallen so far. Thank you very much. And I'll end on this poem, you all. Well, I'll read it. Um, but I would like to introduce it first. Um, the lushest poem to my mind, the most lushest poem to my mind. Um, deep violet and purples, you all. So think right in that central purple motif there. Um, something unforgettable. At Missouri Psych Center, there were windows with steel grates on the outside, so no one could jump or get a clean view. About five stories up would do the trick, but I had no notion of it there. It was all too interesting. I mean, on the back streets of Brooklyn, you see all destitute types. And in art school, it's really the same. You're surrounded by human beings all having profound insecurities and egos the size of Jupiter. But the ward is where it all already happened. That's where the broken soldiers really went to rest. Mental slips and suicide attempts gone awry showed up there in obvious fashion. A middle-aged lady scarred by her own hand from head to toe. Leathery skin and 80s rocker hair all up in loose, hardened hairspray curls was my friend. Sh Maybe not so loose, uh, tight, hardened hairspray curls. <laughs> Think of it that way. She was from the 80s. And pretty happy she almost managed it. She said, boy, this time I almost pulled it off. They had to bring me back, but boy, I know I was a goner for at least 10 minutes. That's what the doc said. I could tell it took her years to build up the strength to get that far, or I suppose the lack of strength to fall that low. But I tell you, she seemed happy about it, genuinely happy. I think some people are just like that. Death makes them grin. Me, well, I'm like most of us, somewhere caught in the middle. And it's no bullshit her name was Joy, and I never knew a girl by that name before. And as it was, she elicited true happiness in me when she told her story. Of course, I was fearful, but the purity of her laughter in the face of death said something unforgettable about strength. I recall her neck all stitched up from ear to ear, I think I loved her. Thank you. And I'll bring this one around, y'all. Uh, this one's from the Captain's Log, and it's a yellow golden poem. Uh, so if the cycle were to revolve, and then we're back up top there. Um, with the yellow, the golden yellows. Koreatown. Walking up the blocks, the blocks, the block, with Vox Vodka in hand and Red Bulls. Schwabi from Jersey City and back demands laughter into, into his directionless ways. David Schwab, shout out. Curb-headed, slashing, cocaine-filled nights of beers in his studio in Brooklyn. Back up the avenues. News greets us of sluts on sidewalks, walk-ups in Koreatown, where we spent a night or two, barricaded by the inability to talk to one or two about this or that. Jeff and Dave, quite the pair of talkers really, yet Korean girls don't need to understand just to smile and laugh hard together, and apart, really. As the waitress serves as cocktails, us cocktails strong, She's bullheaded with a smile. Back out into the night's air of twilight fair, dangling simple off of banisters, railings, and ceilings of iron, steel, and metalish glares, metalish glares. Kaleidoscopic catastrophes 
from Christmas lights glistening atop her hair and within Betsy's tip-top attitude as she smiles mischievously into the night's salty city air. The bay is by our sides. Thank you all.